Return equals investment over value. For an investment of 43 episodes, about 1,300 minutes of content, equals over 12,000 audio downloads, over 20,000 watch hours, and over 1.5 million impressions. Thank you. I think we're getting our money's worth. Let's get to it. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is still IBF On Demand. Welcome back. I'm your emotionally vulnerable, passionate, and still not so humble host, Eric Wilson. You can find me at eric at ibf.org. Eric at ibf.org. Reach out to me. Let me know what's going on in your life in 2022. We still have our sponsor, Arkiva, a new look, but still your one plan SNOP software solution. I said this is 2022 now. I'm excited. It's a new year. There's a lot of exciting things coming up. Stay tuned. Make sure you're subscribed if you're not already subscribed. I know they say that, but I actually mean it. We got a lot going on this year. I don't want you to miss out. You can actually get notifications when new content comes up. So please subscribe on Spotify, Apple, YouTube, wherever you're getting your podcast or watching this. Make sure you subscribe so you can keep ahead of what's going on coming forward. Because we got a lot going on I don't want you to miss. Events are back, number one. I'm going to be in Scottsdale personally in a couple weeks. In February, we have an SNOP boot camp. And I hope you can make it as well. This is actually still time to register and attend that event. It's an in-person event in Scottsdale. It's a great area, great hotel, but most importantly, great content. This is the most comprehensive two, actually it's three days. You can have a special third day of supply chain uh, focus on the third day, but it's intense comprehensive content, probably the best two days of SNOP training you can get in the industry. I know I'm biased, but I'm actually, I'm serious on this one. I've been to a lot of other conferences, been, seen a lot of other content. This was put together by practitioners over a few years, and it's actually put some of the best up-to-date newest content you can get on that subject. We actually have an IBF cert, SNOP certificate too, the only one in the industry that you have a capability of getting when completion of this course and taking a short test as well. So you can actually come to this conference, not only as a practitioner, as an executive, as someone starting a new SNOP, someone who has a mature SNOP, you need to continue to learn as well, finding out what's going on, what's new. I don't care where you are in the field, what you're doing, SNOP, IBP, BEP, this conference, you have the capability of coming, learning, and then proving what you learn, add your credentials with a only IBF SNOP certificate. Check that out at IBF.org. Check out the events page. We have a lot of events coming on. That's a special one coming up. It's the first one we're doing this year. You have to check it out. If no other conference, that's the conference you probably need to attend. We're going to talk a little bit about today about SNOP. I want to get into the subject of SNOP because when we talk about SNOP, we had a lot of great content over the past two years. Believe it or not, I'm still here. I can't believe you're still listening to me after two years. I haven't chased you away yet. And welcome all the new listeners as well. See if you can hang on for two years. But nonetheless, we've talked about SNOP a lot over the past couple years. One of the things I don't think we've gotten into, and I get a lot of questions, especially when I go in and do consulting and, and organizations, I get a lot of questions on, on exactly how do I show the value of SNOP? How do we actually put together a project plan for SNOP? Those are important questions that you need to ask. I know a lot of people go into SNOP because it's a, it's a phrase and they learn how to spell it and they're like, okay, we need to do it. Or executives say we need SNOP because that's what I was told we need without understanding exactly the cost or the benefits of doing it. 
one of the things I'd say, if, if you are in the position of selling SNOP into an organization as a practitioner, you're a demand planner, supply chain, finance, and you're saying, hey, I know we need these and there's going to be benefits if we do it. And you're, you're tasked to sell it into an organization. There's going to be some challenges there. How do you gain executive support without putting some dollars behind it, without putting some cost and return on the investment to the organization? How do you understand the value as yourself or the organization unless you understand what goes into it and what you plan on getting out of it? And then how do you resource it properly unless you truly understand what it will cost you, what you will need? And then if you express those needs, what they're going to get in return. That's what these actually next two episodes are going to be about. It's about determining what exactly is the typical ROI, return on investment of an SNOP, IBP, BEP, I don't care what you call it, not hung up on the acronyms. I'll use a lot of them, but I'm not hung up on them. We're going to talk a little bit about exactly what to expect on the cost side and the benefit side. So we're going to probably break this out over the next two episodes. Welcome to the first episode of 2022. We're going to talk about the cost side today. We're going to come back in a couple weeks. Then we're going to talk about the benefit side of it and put it all together in an ROI return on investment. How do you calculate that for your organization? The way we got these as well, I just want to sidebar it so you understand exactly what went into this. What went into the SNOP boot camp, that training we created. I remember I said it was two years of, really of, of research and putting it together by practitioners. And that's the same thing that went into this research as well. Through the past couple of years, we've been doing a lot of research. IBF's known for their research and doing a lot of research. Part of the research we've done is on SNOP, especially through COVID, how things changed. But we also wanted to look to see exactly what exactly are is a successful best in breed type of SNOP, IBP process. What do they have in common? And that was actually the basis not only for our training. We have a free maturity model at IBF.org as well. That you can see exactly where you are as an organization then as well. Well, so we, we put that in as far as to benchmark you against other organizations. It also went into this research as far as the cost and benefits. There was a lot of organizations, we actually looked at real cost, real benefits that they saw from SNOP. There was a lot of interviews, there was a lot of surveys that were done. All that's compiled, that's what went into this next two, please, uh, two uh, podcasts that you're seeing. So this is actually comes from what we're seeing in organizations from multiple industries, multiple different sizes that we've compiled as the average types of cost or some typical cost that they've seen in implementation. There's about 15 uh, different implementations that went through multiple different uh, uh, successful, mature SNOP uh, organizations, but about 15 startups of, of new SNOP startups that we, we tracked through this process as well. So that's all kind of give you a backstory of what exactly went into uh, the research that's going to compile for the next two podcasts. So that said, diving right into this topic and talking about the cost side of it first, we really identify four major costs. And this isn't rocket science. These are costs you're going to find in any project. Any new project you're doing in business, any project that you're starting up, you generally are going to categorize your costs in these four buckets. And we can actually see these four buckets play out then in an SNOP. Not saying SNOP is a project, but a startup, it is in essence a project to get it off the ground. These were the four costs that most organizations will see some of. They don't record them all, but they have these major four buckets. Their acquisition cost. This is going to be your startup cost. This, then you have your implementation cost. Then you're going to have your operating cost, your ongoing cost, and then the improvement cost continuous improvement on the process as well. So acquisition, implementation, operating, or operation, and then improvement. Those generally are the four big buckets of cost. Breaking those buckets down, starting off with the acquisition cost, these most of the time are your one-time expenses. 
In some organizations, these could be categorized as capital expenditures. Now, a lot of times you don't see capital expenditures in a process improvement or a new process that you're implementing. SNOP is a process. It's not really a technology. So it's a decision-making process. So with that, you typically don't see the large capital expenditures. You're not building a new facility or adding a new machine for an SNOP process. You can find some types of capital expenditures. A lot of times they show up as software or some type of technology is what you're going to do. Usually, though, even them, you have to be careful because it's not a lot of times directly and or only SNOP IBP. An example, if I implement a new software, an end-to-end planning software that does a lot of the supply chain, uh, it does some you know, uh, optimization, but also does predictive as well. It's got a predictive engine. It allows me to do some predictive modeling and forecasting and demand planning then as well. So it's, it, it really becomes an end-to-end system for me. A lot of great systems out there. If I look at putting one of those systems in because it's going to help enable my SNOP, yes, there's a part of that that may be considered SNOP related, but the bulk of it is my tactical operations, my day-to-day operations, my planning that you then have to allocate to those functional areas or other projects as well. So be careful if you're just implementing a software that you don't allocate all those resources or all that expenditure all to an SNOP, generally split up between multiple different buckets inside your organization. There is some systems, though, that could be allocated even more to a SNOP process, a BI tool, for example, if you're using it for data organization, dashboarding, things of that sort. And the primary use of it, it goes back to what the primary use of this software is going to be. If the primary use of it is SNOP, then you can allocate a lot more of that possibly to your SNOP project, IBP type project. Other things that may include as well would be it goes back to we're trying to enable a process. We're trying to enable SNOP, IBP. So things that help us enable that process. Dashboards are a big one. Could be upgrades to systems. Could be current systems. I'm upgrading. I'm creating dashboards, data collection, analysis that needs to be done, storage. So things with data, things with uh, dashboarding, things to enable the process steps, uh, communication, visualization, be ways you can become build collaboration, build more transparency into what uh, different functions are seeing. Those things can help enable SNOP, can then be allocated as a resource towards the process as well. A lot of times when you're talking uh, dashboarding example type thing, those can be done in-house. Those also can be contracted. There's a lot of great organizations or, or companies that come in will do SNOP process, IBF being one of them, that will come in and actually help create those dashboards as well. That as a consulting fee can then be allocated as an expenditure, as a acquisition type of cost. It's a one-time expense to help in, enable your SNOP process as well. Now, be careful though. When I'm talking about acquisition costs, I said a lot of finance people, they think capital expenditures. A lot of what I just described, as a matter of fact, the majority of what I described is not a capital expenditure. It may not be capital and it may not be depreciated. Check with your accountant, check with your CFO. I guess this is the, the you know, the, you know, uh, disclaimer on my podcast that I'm a demand planner. I'm a forecaster. I'm a personality that does a podcast. Check with your uh, personal accountant, your CFO, if you can depreciate any of these. I found history in a lot of these startups and, st- and going in, consulting with organizations, working with finance, a lot of times these are not depreciable type of expenses. But I still will put them in an acquisition type bucket. Examples range from this. I said, we're going to talk about averages. I'm going to give you broad averages. It's going to be based on the size of your organization, the complexity of your of your organization. So you're going to see some big buckets of, of, of ranges with each of these types of cost. We're really looking at about 50000 to about 300000 ranging from organizations that's about, you know, $3 billion, I mean, $300 million, sorry, $3 billion, $300 million to about $3 billion. 
That's the size of organizations we talked to and worked with on a startup. So costs can range from anywhere from about 50,000 to about 300,000. When it comes to the system configuration, data extraction, formatting, things of that sort, it's, that's the majority of it. Uh, so that's about 40,000, about 200,000. The dashboards come to about half of that. So anywhere from 10 to 20,000 to about 150,000 where you're gonna see the dashboarding. I said a lot of times uh, you can find some external sources that would do that as well. The second cost we wanna talk about then is the implementation cost. This is the installation of the process or the design of the process a lot of times. This is where you get the most of your consulting dollars. This is where, when if you're looking at an external uh, person to bring in, which I'd recommend, it actually the majority of your dollars may be tied up here. It's typically the bulk of your expenditures as well. The bulk of your startup cost or your expenditure side of your project for SNOP IBP comes in implementation cost. Now, what are those? Consulting dollars are easy to see. They're, they're, they're billable, it's hours, you can see it. Even if you didn't go there, think of the experts internally that need to be involved in, the subject matter experts, the time of the people need to be involved with it, the process owners, others, a project manager. Ma manager. Remember I said you may want to consider the consulting to do the project management aspect of it. If not, you're doing that in-house, you have a full-time employee designated to this project. You're going to have subject matter experts in supply, finance, demand, marketing, sales, executives. You're going to have subject matter experts that are involved in this process. They're going to have to give part of their time as well, that allocation of time. So think about those time that you're allocating. As I said, it's real easy when you come to consulting wise because it's billable hours. Consider that same type of mindset internally with the people that are allocated to this project. And you should allocate a certain amount of time of these people. It shouldn't be your full-time job and. If you're working and you should do this, it may be up to 40% of one of your resources that are allocated to this project for the first six months to really get it going and, and make it work. So kind of understand the time that needs to be allocated for each of your resources. I said, you may have a couple people that's up to 40, 50%. You may have five to 10 people that may be 20% of the time. And then have that full, one full-time person that is the project owner, will be the SOP champion, a project manager, that type of person. I said, from the project management standpoint, it's okay, perfectly okay to do it yourself. I've seen a lot of organizations. I did it myself in, in a few different organizations as well and starting up a new SNOP process. But sometimes the expert is the person that lives 100 miles away. So it's sometimes that's why it's good to look at an external resource to be able to come in and help with this aspect of it. A lot of times because of the change management part of this as well. Change management is a critical piece of SNOP, IBP, BEP that's overlooked. And doing that from an external standpoint is a lot easier sometimes because it's accepted more. Even though you may be saying the same thing internally, this person externally, it's listened to more. It's accepted more. They know how to navigate the lion minds a little bit better. So having that external resource, that I said the expert lives 100 miles away, but also it's more accepted as far as for that change management aspect. It can help manage that. They have experience in that as well. So the IBF actually does this. We've actually come into organizations. Not only would we do an assessment, which is maybe you don't want to do the consulting. You just want to see where you are. IBF does that, comes into an organization, will do a complete end-to-end -end assessment based on the research, based on benchmarking where you are in the industry, where everybody else is, where you should be where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are, a complete end-to-end -end benchmark of your SNP process. We'll do that for you. But then if you also want to engage as far as helping with a new SNOP or a stalled SNOP and getting it to the next level, either getting it started or getting it past a emerging to a next level type of SNOP or even to a vanguard, we can help with that as well. We can be that expert that lives 100 miles away. I said, I've done that. Coming in organizations, there's a lot of other people. We actually will hire practitioners, have experience of this, that will help bring it, uh, their experience into your organization as well. So reach out to IBF.org uh, and look at the assessments and 
and what we do from advisory as well. There's a lot what we do as advisory that can help you out. Please check us out and we can actually help you out with this implementation aspect, the change management, the assessment, understand what you need to work on. We can actually help with that as one as well. Another thing we can help with, but even if I said, yes, I gave a sales pitch for IBF, I admit it. IBF aside, I don't care who you go with. One of the other things that you need to kind of focus on the implementation cost with, especially the change management aspect, is training. Training is a critical part of implementation. And unfortunately, so many companies overlook it. You have people changing their processes, starting to work together. You need to talk the same languages. There's no better way to do that than training the people that's going to be engaged it's going to be working with it. It's going to be connected with the SNOP process. It's going to feed off the SNOP process. Understanding the language, understanding the direction, understanding the vision of it, understanding the process of what different functions do, that all goes into training. Training is a critical part of change management, get people more comfortable. So it's not the, you know, what are we doing? Why are we doing it? Now they understand. It also helps the startup, gets engagement. It allows you to get uh, implementation quicker. Training is a critical piece. Obviously, we do it. There's a lot of organizations that have great training programs. Think of doing something in-house. We can come in-house or think of coming to an SNOP boot camp uh, in two weeks in Scottsdale, Arizona. That's the reason why we do those things is those are trainings you can come to on your own and, and help you know, bring some of your key members of your team to. Those are the reason we do those things. So that's our implementation cost. When it comes to implementation cost, so this is your biggest bucket. We saw anywhere from about 200, 250,000 to about 500,000. Once again, a pretty big range. It based on the people you have involved. I said the, you probably need one full-time person coordinator. You're looking at anywhere from two to 12 different people that are part-time, anywhere from 40, 50% to 20%. You could look at some external advisory and then add in the training. Add in about ten, fifty thousand dollars a you know in your first year to for training purposes, getting everyone on the same page, being able to talk the same language. The next cost we're talking about is operating cost. This is going to be your day to day. This is ongoing cost. After year one, a lot of these costs won't go away. These are recurring costs. This is the cost of, of operating this process. It's not usually tracked. A lot of organizations we talked, they never track these because it's absorbed in the individual functions, which is fine. You don't have to actually track them. A lot of these costs are absorbed. And, and there's the, a lot of arguments I heard of why they could, you should be absorbed from a financial perspective. Great. You don't need to actually track these, but... I would be aware of them because once again, we're talking about the hours, the time. Take an, a second and think about the time spent in designing, working, sitting in a meeting. We joked, I had a, an SNOP and we were having an executive SNOP. We had all the C-suites in this room. We had vice president, senior vice presidents. We had, we had, we had uh, about 15 people sitting in this room. A lot of high-level people from this organization making decisions, but the the brain power in that room, or the, at least the level of experience in that room, and HR was in that room as well. And afterwards, said that was a hundred thousand dollar meeting, is what she told me, because she was doing the math of the people in that room and how much they got paid, and was figuring out we just had a hundred thousand dollar meeting. Now, I think she was exaggerating things, but there was some truth to that. When you think about the rate, the rough hours of that people are putting into monthly SNOP process, what they're allocating as far as getting dashboards together, spending time in meetings, doing follow-ups, when you consider all of that, the rough amount of hours are spent, that is actually money. So you may want to consider that. I said, I, not everybody tracks it. I would at least make a consideration so you have that visibility to see if it's worthwhile what you're doing. You may also include the people that help 
put together dashboards that may not show up in the meetings. Don't forget about them. Uh, the people who, you know, are the analysts that will be doing different types of analysis to give you the information to come to the meeting with. Don't forget about them as well. You could also possibly include some SG&A costs as well. Back to that software, if you have a licensing, an ongoing monthly uh, cloud subscription or annual licensing that you have, you may want to consider a portion of that that's enabling your uh, SNOP. If you added some of that as the acquisition cost in the very, you know, very beginning, you may want to allocate some of that now on your ongoing operating costs when you have those licensing and fees then as well. So those all could become operating costs. Luckily, what I've seen in organizations, what we talked to, this is anywhere from 250000 to 750000 Most of it is time. Most of it is left hours. Do the math, how you feel comfortable, figure out who's going to be involved. It could be a wide range, could be on the low end, or you could find that you have a, on the high end as well. Either way, even if you don't track it, I would uh, said at least put it on one side of the balance sheet so we can see two weeks if we're making money off of this process, if it's worthwhile investment. Spoiler alert, it is. The last cost we're going to talk about is improvement costs. These are my future costs. These are future integrations of systems, future purchases of systems that I want to do. Things that you know may enable my SNOP process going forward as far as dashboarding, the data, as far as being able to help with the process step, uh, being able to be able to do the tactical, but it's information that's fed in to the SNOP process better, taking a portion of that. So those are future costs that may uh, be entailed. The other future cost that I don't want you to lose sight of, please, is the training. Because I don't want you to neglect a formalized training process. You can do it internally. Allocate some resources to come to an ongoing events every year, IBF, other people's events as well. Uh, there's a lot of great organizations out there that do events that are coming back in person. There's a lot of training that you can do, certification for your people that you want to look at as well. Those are ongoing future training to make sure that you're keeping abreast of what's new. You're keeping people engaged. You're keeping the level of, ex of expertise elevated. As people come into your organization, you're getting them on board. You're training them. Future training needs is an important aspect to an SNOP as well. So consider that ten, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a year. Don't make that a one-time training for the implementation. Make that an improvement cost ongoing. Put that into your 2023 budget right now and 2024 budget. Make sure you have that dollars allocated to be able to do those future training, in-house certification, whatever new people come on board, whatever is necessary. So when we're looking at the total cost now, typically what we're looking at from a total cost is anywhere from between about $300 thousand to about seven hundred and fifty thousand that said this goes from about a 300 billion dollar organization to about a three three hundred million dollar organization to a three billion dollar organization so it's a wide range of companies we talk to so it was a wide range of expenditures back but anywhere from about three hundred thousand to about seven hundred and fifty thousand is generally the cost you're going to see can it be done cheaper absolutely i've done it cheaper can you do it cheaper? Yes, you could do it cheaper. I caution though, mature organizations. I said, this is based on our research of the companies that are start up. It's also based on the companies which are the vanguards, which are the best in class, which are seeing significant results with their SNOP process. They didn't shortcut it. The mature organizations, majority of them in the vanguard, did not shortcut their expenditures. They have an in-house or ongoing training programs. They have the cost be able to uh, really laid out and what they put into it. So they put the effort into it to get the results they have. It's return equals investment over value. The investment's an important piece to get the full value. Can you do it cheaper? Yes. I just caution you're going to get out some of it, what you put into it. It may, if you also, if you kind of shortcut things, it may impact your engagement. It may impact future resources. If you say, okay, we're only going to do this for 100,000, 200,000. 
great. It may impact those future resources you need it. If you need that person allocated to this process, designated this process, which is some of the best in class have, a SNOP champion, you won't be able to free up those resources when you need them because then you have to resell while you're coming back for more. So have it laid out ahead of time to understand what all your costs are going to be. So it helps with the engagement of the people because they're getting something more out of it. It also helps you with the resources as well. And it's important to know your cost and to plan for them. If you don't plan for them, you're going to have some anyway. Then you're going to have problems when you have to start finding ways to pay for some of those costs that will occur. So what do we do? We have all these costs. Is it worth it? Can we afford it? Stay tuned next week. That's what's known as a cliffhanger. That's what I'm going to leave you on. We're going to, this is the end of part one. We're going to come back in a couple weeks. And we're going to talk about the benefit side of it, that value side of the equation. We're going to talk about the same way we just went through the cost, what real companies are seeing as far as real benefits, what we could actually measure inside organizations as benefits connected to an SNOP IBP process. So it's an exciting episode two weeks and I come back. My name is Eric Wilson. This is IBF On Demand. You can find me at eric at ibf.org. That's eric at ibf.org. I talked a lot about what's going on as far as the consulting. Reach out to me if you're interested in finding out more information about a maturity model, about the assessment we can do for you about consulting. Guess what? If you just have a question, ask me the question. I don't mind. I don't charge to answer a question. That's free. Send me your questions, eric at ibf.org. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. We do have a sponsor for this, a great uh, sponsor, uh, Arkiva, your one plan SNOP software solution. Matter of fact, in fact, new look. They have a new logo. Still the same great company for many years. We do have an upcoming conference. I mentioned the one in Scottsdale. It's focused on SNOP. We're going to talk a lot of bit about what is exactly best practices. What do you need to know as far as starting a new one, having a mature one, KPIs, different types of uh, what exactly we're seeing new in, in as far as SNOP IVP. Check that out. I don't care if you're starting one, new practitioner, have one, mature executive here in finance. This is the right conference for you. We have the SNOP certificate. Only IBF SNOP certificate in the world, recognized globally. Check that one out. It's available after this conference then as well. So this is 2022. We're kicking it off. I'm excited. Subscribe, follow, whatever you may do. Tune back in a couple weeks. Exciting conclusion. I said, I'm not hung up on uh, acronyms, but we have an exciting conclusion of IBF ROI on SNOP and IBP for YOU. So please check that out. And finally, as we ring in the new year, we cannot forget the most important lessons we've already learned from 2020 and 2021. Wash your hands.